The isoelectric point of any amino acid is the pH value at which that amino acid exists predominantly in the Zwitter ion form. So basically at the isoelectric point, the concentration of the carboxylate ion is equal to the concentration of the ammonium ion. So if the concentration of these two ions, these two forms is equal, we have a negative charge and a positive charge because they're equal they cancel out and so the overall net charge of our amino acid at the isoelectric point will be zero because this also has a net charge of zero because we have a negative and a positive and those cancel out so at the isoelectric point for any specific amino acid, that amino acid will have a net charge of zero. Now, what exactly determines the isoelectric point of our amino acid? So notice if the isoelectric point of any amino acid only depended on the carboxylic acid group and this ammonium group, then every single amino acid would have the same exact isoelectric point because every single amino acid has the same exact group. It has the carboxylic acid as well as our ammonium group. But we know that every single amino acid has its own isoelectric value. Some have a low pH value and others have a high pH isoelectric value. Now, what actually influences the isoelectric point? What creates this difference between the isoelectric point between different amino acids is this side chain R group. So every amino acid has its own unique side group. So some side groups are polar, some are nonpolar, some are acidic, while others are basic. And it turns out that because of this, the side groups will actually influence the isoelectric point of that specific amino acid. In fact, the difference between the isoelectric points of two different amino acids is a result of the difference in the side groups. And to see what we mean, let's take two different amino acids with two different side chain groups. So let's take the glycine and let's take the R Notice that both of these amino acids have the same uh, carboxylic acid group as well as our ammonia group and the difference lies in this side group R. For glycine, it's a simple H atom. For arginine, it's this long chain here and this has an acidic property to it. So notice that only two H atoms can be lost by the glycine. It's the H attached to our oxygen and it's the H attached to this nitrogen. However, for this case, we have this oxygen that can donate that H. We have this nitrogen that can donate that H. And we also have this nitrogen, a second one, that can also donate uh, an H when our pH is 12.5 or above. So remember, the pH at which our carboxylic acid will donate that H is about 2.2. The pH at which this group will, no, uh, will donate the H is about 9.1. And for this case, it's 12.5. So as a result of that, we see that the isoelectric point for glycine is around 6, but the isoelectric point for our arginine is 10.8. So why is there this difference? Remember, the isoelectric point is the point at which the net charge on the amino acid is zero. So at a pH of 6, we see that this pH is high enough so that our oxygen gives off that H. Because our oxygen gives off the H at a pH of 2.2 and 6 is higher than 2.2, but it's not high enough to give off the H from our nitrogen because this only gives off an H at a pH of 9.1. So we have a negative charge here, a positive charge here, they cancel and so the overall charge is zero. But for this it's slightly different. We have a positive charge here and we have a positive charge here if 
our pH was 6. So if the pH is 6 for the arginine, this would be protonated, this would be protonated, and this would have a negative charge. So positive 2 minus 1 gives us a net charge of positive 1 if the pH was 6 for arginine. But we see that our isoelectric point for arginine is 10.8, and that's because at a pH of 10.8, this would deprotonate it, giving a net charge of zero on this section. This would also be deprotonated, so we'll have a negative, and this would still be protonated, so we have a negative, neutral, and positive, and that gives us an overall charge of zero. So we see that this R group actually influences the isoelectric point of our amino acid. Now the isoelectric point of amino acid leads us directly to the next section. We're going to look at electrophoresis. So electrophoresis is basically a process. It's a method that can be used to separate a mixture of different amino acids based on their isoelectric point based on the charge found on our amino acid. So it utilizes an electric field to basically move our amino acids along either a paper or a fluid. So let's take a look at the following setup. So this is our electrophoresis setup. We basically have some type of paper or we have a fluid, let's say a fluid, and we take, let's suppose, a mixture of two amino acids, glycine as well as arginine, these two amino acids that we used over there. So we place them directly at the center of our plate. Now one side is the anode, the other side is our cathode. The anode carries a positive charge, the cathode carries a negative charge. So at some given pH, so this solution, our fluid is at some given pH. So that's something that we can control. We can make the pH high, we can make the pH low, or we can make the pH neutral. So at some given pH, the mixture of amino acids is placed at the center. At that given pH, different amino acids will exist with different amount of positive and negative charge. And the reason for that is the reason that we discussed here. So what determines the isoelectric point, the amount of charge that is found on our molecule is these side groups here. So for example, at a pH of 6, this would be neutral, but at a pH of 6, this would have a positive charge of 1. So as we turn on our uniform electric field, let's suppose once we place the mixture of two amino acids, we flip on that uniform electric field, the amino acids that carry a net positive charge will begin to move towards our cathode that has the negative charge. The amino acids with the net negative charge will move towards our anode, the positive side, and those amino acids that carry a net neutral charge, so zero charge, they will not move at all. So once we flip on that electric field, what happens is, let's suppose at a pH of 6, we know that glycine, which is found in our mixture of two amino acids, will not move because at a pH of 6, it carries a net charge of zero. So it will not be influenced by the electric field because it will it will not have any net charge. However, the arginine, which at a pH of 6, does have a charge of positive 1. So positive 1 comes from here, positive 1 comes from here, and a negative 1. So two positives, one negative, that gives us a net of positive 1. Our arginine will begin to move towards the negative side, the cathode, and eventually, when they equilibrate, the arginine will end up at this location, let's say right here, and the glycine will not have moved. And so now we have separated the glycine 
from our arginine. So we see that this process of electrophoresis, which uh, basically separates our amino acids by uh, on the basis of their charge, on the basis of their isoelectric point, can be very useful when we want to separate the mixture of three or more or any amount of amino acids. So once again, what determines the isoelectric point of our amino acid is not this group or this group, but ultimately it's the R group that determines, that differentiates the isoelectric point of one amino acid from the other amino acid.